Don't let vats of water sit down. The mosquitoes breed in it. So keep the water moving. So the Romans had that figured out. And they also knew that the water was related to the transmission of malaria. And the water won them. And so I look back on the Romans and sort of think they were geniuses in public health. I mean, that's a genius movement in public health. You also saw in Ravenna, um, the river Po was diverted by the Roman engineering. And then, you know, they drained swamps, still water, mosquitoes are in it. And then you know that in 1300, those canals weren't maintained, water became stagnant, the population is loaded with malaria, things fall, and before you know it, the Roman Empire, half of its moved over to the other side, then you get the influences. So all of this you can trace back to what was going on with water and whether or not it was moving. The main question of the course is why do we believe what we believe? In today's climate, students are often taught practical facts helpful in solving current problems like malaria or HIV, but there is little thought given to the human experience of suffering attributable to such burdens. The course, therefore, teaches students how to feel rather than what to think, recognizing that each student will embark on a unique journey and will walk away without sharing the same fact set memorized by other classmates, but with a new approach to the collective subconscious of humanity. One can stand in front of Michelangelo's Pietà and in a moment learn more about compassion than he or she might in four years of college. I remember on this trip just realizing how much I didn't know and how much more there was to learn and how much there was to think about. And I remember being challenged to think on this program in a way that I'd never done before. I think before this experience, obviously I think everyone would be in agreement that compassion is important in medicine. but through the journals and through articles and through discussions, it really forces you to put yourself in the patient's position, patient's position or in the physician's position and truly realize why compassion is important, why it makes a difference to let your patients know that you're there for them and understand what they're going through and will fight with them till the end. I think there's a big difference in knowing that it's necessary and knowing why it's necessary. And I think that class truly forces you to realize that. Um, well, for me, the thing I got out most out of the class is like I realized that compassion is really difficult and it's not really that common. And like even though it's so important and you think that many doctors have it, it's actually quite rare and it takes a really conscious effort to live a life acting compassionately. Well, I think what we've learned is that it does matter and one thing that we've talked about is the art of medicine versus the science of medicine. and. One conclusion I've came to throughout this experience is that they both matter and you can't just know the science of medicine. You have to really get that art of medicine which involves compassion in order to really treat your patients in the way they need to be treated. I think values are a part of the clinical practice of medicine. I think they're important. I think they're important because 
there are certain times when no one's looking, when no one's watching over your shoulder, when it's late at night, when you're tired, and you could do what's best for the patient, or you could do what's best for yourself. And no one would know the difference, not even the patient, only you. And you're not going to get a promotion for doing so. So at that dark hour, what do you have left to turn to? It's not what someone told you. It's what you thought of yourself when you were challenged. Hopefully you've been challenged before. I was in this course. Now what I would like to ask you to do is look at this very carefully. Think back to what you read in Levy's text. Most of all, think back to what you've been learning about the South. Read back to what I said this morning. And take sort of an, um, an instance or take a connection that you see. Take the image that you have in front of you and refer it to what you've learned and what you've read. Five years after having experienced the reading of Carla Levy's Christ Stopped at Eboli in the setting of the story, I continue to carry with me through the hospital corridors Levy's account of the dying peasant that brings his story to a close. I seem to think of it in any sort of interaction I have in the hospital, but the times I dwell on it most are the times I am most caught off guard. On call at the urgent care of obstetrics and gynecology service, I assisted in a dilation and curatage of a woman who was devastated by the loss of her pregnancy. Suddenly the whispered prayers, the tears, and the feelings of powerlessness brought me back to Matera and we sat together in silence for moments that felt like more. As we sat, I eventually submitted to my longing for greater control, and I felt a sense of peace come over me. I realized that my presence there was a reflection of the attachment I felt for the woman I sat beside. Through deep exploration of the novel, compassion, and myself, I understood that feeling of peace. I noticed how many students and trainees we have in medicine who excel in the sciences and they have expertise in assimilating facts and making associations. However, I was really also struck by how many lacked any insight into why we do what we do and how much our own values actually end up influencing how we practice medicine and how our patients view us. You know, I think what we try to do is introduce them to medicine. Um, and the culture of medicine and then the art of healing as opposed to the science of healing um, and that's just not something that you you get taught pre-med and you typically don't get taught that in medical school it's typically when you're in faculty and you've been there a long time you finally have time to think about things like that that you really start studying I, mean, I think it's more and more important for several reasons one we are become we have become much more focused on the science and so you lose the human side uh, medicine is becoming more technical. A lot m we can inflict a lot more pain than we used to. A hundred years ago, we could hold your hand, we could solve a few problems, but a lot of problems we couldn't. All we could do is tell you what to expect. Um, so there's much more connection. Now we can actually treat you, but not every treatment is right for you. Not every treatment works, and a lot of them inflict a lot of pain. And I think people forget that when they objectify the patient, and it's just this is just a procedure. This is a scientific. Um, I don't want to use the word experiment, a scientific um, process as opposed to a human process. Um, I think that medicine has moved very quickly and, and we're now in the era of genetics and technology and, and I fear that we have really lost the patient in the patient-centered care that we're supposed to be developing. And I really think that this, this course is giving them the foundations. Every day they're challenged with ethical issues, with tough decisions, with dealing with diff different cultures, and um, just gray situations where this kind of reflection, I think, benefits them greatly. They have, some of them have changed so much from concrete black and white opinions mm -hmm. to understanding that well, there's more to it. They came to see that it's not all one way. I think this program, from what I've witnessed, is that you give them pause where they would not normally take it. They're at an age where they are reaching out and trying to learn in a certain way um, to 
have accomplishments in a certain way and you take them out of that way of learning and actually really make them understand that there's a bigger picture, that uh, it's, there's a long road to a lot of these assumptions that they make when they naturally get outraged when they hear stories about um, uh, how orphans were treated, um, you know, stories of slavery, every thing that they're picking up along the way, this, that there's a lot of complexity to it all. And I think uh, as much as you give them a voice, you're also teaching them to listen. You know, you can't even compare it to going into a classroom and sitting down and listening to somebody lecture. No, this is real education. And, and these kids are thinking through things at a level, uh, at a depth, that um, is inspiring to me as a teacher. One of the reasons that you travel abroad is to give yourself a better perspective about you and your world, to offer you the opportunity for objectivity, for the distance that's required in order to perhaps weigh the reality that you have with the emotions regarding that reality so that ultimately you can formulate well-planned, well-developed, mature ideas. <coughs> Um, so the invitation to look for the Lucanian in you is twofold. One, it's you vis-a-vis -vis your world, your reality, your future. But two, it's also to get to know yourself. Something we tend to very often shy away from, be afraid of, never have time for, until ultimately we don't even hear ourselves. And yet, one reality does remain, which these peasants proved, that if you know who you are, and if you're balanced within yourself, and if you can find peace and harmony within yourself, then the world around you matters relatively, and you can nothing but impact it positively. So, to find the Lucanian in you is an invitation to find yourself. And this whole journey, or pilgrimage, has been an invitation to do just so. Ascolta, Kiko, devi fare qua davanti, devi fare così. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye. Bye, bye.